All right, how's it going guys? Are you good? So in this video, I want to show um, how we make um, lots and actual production models. Or this is this is my way to make it, right? Uh, different people have different ways to do it. Uh, I'm going to explain my way and I will explain why I think is um, more flexible and sometimes more effective. And so, you know, of course we want, you know, the ZBrush Sculpt, but the ZBrush Sculpt is just one more step, right? It's a lot, a lot of steps to make a creature to work, right? So always something that I want is to keep the, the creature, the production model as flexible as possible. When, you know, when you're in production, it's no more concept art, it's not just, it's no beautiful images, you know, it just needs to work, needs to move, needs to go into rigging, needs to go into CFX, needs to go into FX, needs to be animated. So it's a different story. So I'm going to talk, I'm going to show, let's see if we can, if I take, right, and we bring, um, so we have the brush there and I need my, uh, open Maya. Okay, so here you can see my, so normally in production, we have three lots, right? We have lot 100, that is lowest edition level, right? Is the lowest lot, lot 200, and lot 300, right? Each one of these lots, um, I mean 100 and 200, so 100 and 200 are going to be the... Um, Lots for animation. Animation will use them for being able to um, work faster. And the lot 300 is the lot that is going to be for uh, rendering, right? So what's the difference between these lots? Let's name them. Uh, this one is going to be Gaishu 100. This one is going to be Gaishu 200. Oops, 200. And this one is going to be Gaishu 300. Also, I'm going to show you a couple of blend shape tips and tricks that it will help you a lot with this. So <clears throat> the difference between these lots is going to be the, um, the detail, right? So lot 200 is going to be one solution up from the 100. So if we're going to mesh smooth, Oh, it's here. Ah, here we go. So the lot 200 is going to be one solution up from the 100. Good. And the lot uh, 300 is going to be two solutions up from the 100, right? So two. Cool. So this is, these ones are the, the three lots that we need. Each one of them are going to have more detail in the mesh, right? So that's that's how it's going to work. As well, I want that my my geometry in ZBrush, you know, when I get into uh, my highest solution level in ZBrush, the model have around 50 million polygons because that's quite a lot of detail. Uh, so for having that, you know, I need to have a I, I need to plan how uh, the amount of polygons uh, I'm going to I'm going to use in my load 100, right? Now, some people like to go for a heavier load. Some people like to go to a, for a load that will look something more like this, right? For, as a first load. My problem with that, um, I even saw people, no, that, that's very high for normally. But I saw people going for something like this. And that's all right. You can do that. Uh, my problem with this is that it takes way too much time to fix it and change it. Same with UVs. Uh, make a reloop area it takes too much time. It's a lot of polygons. We are talking that we have around uh, here, we have around 700,000 faces. That's quite a lot, right? And here I have 180. No, wait, this is not correct. Wait. Ah, here we go. That makes sense. So, yeah, my load 100 have 11,000. My load 200 have 46,000 and my load 300 have 186,000. That makes sense, right? So, of course, fix something in a, a geometry with 11,000 polygons is super easy, right? 
they want to put a new arm. Okay, sure. We delete a little bit. We we'll de delete a, a couple of polygons and we put a new arms. We need to fix UVs. Of course, sure. Here is easy. Now, um, so and here is much more difficult, right? You need to reloop this area. It will take more work. And at the same time, uh, my load 300 is the highest load. You know, is the load that is going to be rendered and the displacement is going to work. So, you know, is the is the load that um, is going to be watching the screen. So we want that these three loads always be the same, right? For example, if I go into ZBrush and I have this, I have my load 300 and I make a change. Let's say that we do something like this, right? And we did this change. This change needs to go into all the other loads. But you know how we do that, right? I mean, what we need to create these geometries again? No, we don't. We just take this and this, and we go to the form, click here, and check topology. And press apply and you guys are going to say no that doesn't work no yes it works tuk, tuk, boom done and we say okay but we, i want you to 100 the 100 i'm sure that doesn't work no it works as well and now why this is happening why it works well it's simple the point order you know each one of these each one of these points have a number right so if this one is going to be let's say this number is going to be one and this one is going to be two right when you subdivide the mesh this number is still being one and two what it change is what is in between the new ones so when you create a blend shape the blend shape it will only move the numbers that are matching so if you if it doesn't find the number 1005 it will not move the number 1005 but it will move one and two so that's super good right that's this makes the our work much more easier i mean some some pipelines in some production companies you know uh, this is automated and they do it in a different way some companies you know you only publish the 300 and let the rest of the lots get decimated and that's it because at the end of the day the, these lots are only used by animation right um but in in another companies you don't have that luxury right uh, or you don't have that piece of the pipe or that piece of the puzzle so this is the way that I, I like to do it because i keep it super clean everything is going to match no one is going to have problems now what else we need because it's not the only thing that we need right uh, because working in this way means that for example uvs let's see if i have uvs right here uvs are you sure i think i have uvs okay cool so something that I do as well, I create two UV sets. Um, why I create two UV sets? Because one UV set, I'm going to um, create it just for um, rigging. Let's see if I can, uh, and I want to call it no smooth UV set. No smooth. And that UV set, it will match um, it will match in all the lots, right? And also something that I will do is that my map one, yeah, this UV set, when I when I smooth the geometry, I will smooth the UV set as well, the, the borders as well. And why I want to do that? Because I'm creating the UVs in a super low load. So if I if you imagine that I have a let's see if it's a good example. Uh, if only if I only smooth the inside, right? And I don't smooth the borders, that means that this point here, right, it will show up here. So I'm going to start in having intersection UVs. And that's because I'm doing it in a very low load, right? Uh, so it's smoothing the borders, it gives me a very nice and average mesh. Um, and I'm going to do one smooth borders and what with one one and one with no smooth at all. And and that will get transferred into my load 300. By subdivision, right? I subdivided that, and so now I will I will have my load three hundred with a smooth UV set and one load three hundred and my load three hundred with no smooth um, with a no smooth UV set as well. Now, when you have that, it's all good. That's pretty much what we need, right? Um. It was something else that we can do if we use this process for everything is 
Um, we can be we can make it by groups, right? So let's say that we have this one, right? And it's a it's a group. You can see that inside I have everything, right? I'm going to duplicate this one. Uh, we're going to call this one load 100. Load 100, and we are going to call this one load 300. Oh, let's call it load yeah whatever 200. And I'm going to do uh, I saw duplicate. I'm going to smooth this one time. Close, boom. Okay. So another thing that you can do is that when you have changes in your in your load three hundred or two hundred and let's say that this is a two day three hundred, right? We have these changes. You know, some changes are affecting eyes, are affecting let's say affect the eye. Let's, let's I'm doing very dirty, right? But let's do this. Boom. The eyes now are moving there. Boom. And the nails here are going to move here. Right? So let's say that we have that changes and you need to go one by one, you know, and, and make a blend shape. Well, that's not necessary. You can blend shape by groups. Boom, boom, form, blend shape. And later you just select one object. Yeah. And you're going to see that everything is moving. Yeah. You see? Boom, boom. So that's, that's how, how I maintain my lots. And I think that is the most, in my experience, it's been the most flexible way to, to work. Uh, because that means that if I need to change anything, I do it in my lot 100. I subdivide that model, and um, and I transfer and I transfer I transfer the data that I had in the lot 300 into the into the into the new 300. I don't know if it's it's very clear. I know that seems a bit um, um, a bit complicated, but this is not. It's super simple. So you have you you start just making a very low res load 100 that have every loop that you need, right? If you need to, uh, if you know that you're not going to need wrinkles in some areas from ablations, just put it there. Remember that when you sub divide, so when you sub divide a mesh with a triangle, you get a quad. So don't worry if you need to make a loop and you need to make a pole, you just put a, a small triangle there. That triangle is going to create a, a pole that later you can use for um, for uh, for a wrinkle. So you just need to plan a little bit, right? You say, okay, I need a wrinkle there. You just put a pole. Um, add all the geometry that you need to make the model work, right? And rigging needs to make the model work because rigging is going to really like this. Super, the rigging is going to like this workload because it's, it's super flexible for them as well because the point order is something that they can use as well right for example you do we do we do something that we call uh, body roms right and body roms is the model when the model is doing different shapes there for example it's doing this right it's taking the arms up and all that movements uh, sometimes from the rig are not looking good enough so what we do is we we sculpt that movement right as in betweens, right? We 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 are, we sculpt this deformation, and having the point order the same, that means that we just need to do it in the lot in the lot three hundred, and that goes into the, all the other lots. Um, so this have a lot of advantages. You can you can save a lot of time to another departments and think about this. You know, this is not about how you how you make it work for how you make work the model for you. Is how you make the model work for everyone else. Uh, so that's that's the, the the nice thing about this workflow. Some people work differently. This is how I like to work. And um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I, I explain it correctly, but you know it's pretty simple. How a very nice uh, a very nice lot one hundred. Make your lot two hundred and three hundred. And just work in the 300, and after you just buy blend shapes, you transfer the information, the the change in position to the other lots, and that's it. You are going to get the one to one to everything. Um, UVs as well. UVs is super simple. UVs, you know, make your UVs in the lot 100. Make two UV sets, one that is smooth and one that is not smooth, and get that into all the other lots. 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty much. And why? Uh, sorry, and the no smooth uh, UVs are for um, for rigging as well, so they can transfer weights between the different lots super easy. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, guys. Um, hope you like it. I know that it's not. It wasn't not a. It's not a sculpting or ZBrush tip and trick, but uh, this could help you. You know, in the. In, I think that this is something that you know will help you a lot. Also remember point order is the number that is why each vertex have a number that's a point order that's why we are able to do this and the difference you know is point position so you know that's the point oh sorry I said because I had a relationship but the where the point is in space is the point position the rest of it is just the point order right okay Hope you guys like it. I know that it's, uh, it's, no, it's not as um, as fun uh, as other videos, but this this could help you a lot for building creatures for visual effects. Um, for visual effects, this is a nice workflow that uh, it will work in most cases, and it will keep you know very flexible. Because when you have a client that is asking for lots of changes a lot of times and you need to be changing topology because the client say, oh, I need a new arm or we want uh, more fingers, you know, make the changes in a very low load uh, that will make, you know, your work easier. The work of is uh, the work of another department easier because it's only a small piece that is changing and, you know, it will it will make interactions a bit faster. Normally, we don't want that to happen. We want to lock topology in very early in the show, um, but that's not the case lately. Lately, you know, all the shows uh, are clients are having more changes uh, um, during the pipeline. Um, so this is this is a workflow that I build for um, for being more flexible and being able to make changes much faster. Hope you guys like it. If you something I didn't explain correctly, please you know write me down there. Let me know if you have any any questions because that will help me to make new tutorials. Uh, and like, subscribe, you know, so the the channel grows a little bit, and I will be able to do more more content. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. See ya.